Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Monte Carlo Methods. In the last video, we talked about checking the results of our simulations by making histograms and superimposing the target PDF on top. PDF stands for probability density function. And by target, I mean the distribution we are trying to simulate from. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that using either Python or R. And I'm going to get you running from the ground up in the language of your choice. Now, if you already know Python or R and you've chosen one to do your Monte Carlo simulations with, you can go to the very bottom of the description box below. And I have code there, which is just how to make the uh, histogram and superimpose the PDF in both languages. But if you need a little bit of help, including how you get this stuff on your machine, stick around. Python or R, what should we use? R is primarily for data science applications, but can be used for so much more than that. I wouldn't exactly call what we're doing a data science application, but R is awesome for visualizing results of simulations, for making cool graphics, 3D interactive, rotatable things. I really like R and I use it every day and I also use it with other languages. Sometimes I program in something else and then put my results into R. And the reason is the negative to R, and that is that it can be slow when you're doing big, grindy, loopy operations like we will be doing in here as our algorithms get more advanced. We're gonna do millions and millions of cranking through loops, so R is gonna get very slow. But if you don't mind waiting, then R might be for you. It's also easier to get started with. You can just download it for free and open it on your computer and you're ready to go. The other choice is Python, which is much more powerful, but it is not as easy a startup. Uh, first of all, once you download it, you're really downloading a compiler and then you have to find a code editor that you wanna use. And then you have to set some path variables so your code editor knows where the compiler is and it's a little harder to get started from scratch, but worth figuring out. I don't want to go over that here. It's going to be different for different people and different operating systems. So you might want to use Python. R is more often used in a classroom environment, unless you're actually taking a computer science class in Python or something like that, because R is easier to start with and start get going right away, whereas Python has a, a slightly steeper learning curve. So it is your choice. Now, I am not going to have you download or install either of these, which would be optimal. But again, I don't want to have to deal with individual operating systems. So what I'm going to describe here, we're going to do everything online using a website called Google Collab or Google Collaboratory. This is going to allow us to code and get results from simulations completely online without any software on our computer. I think it's better to have it locally on your computer, but again, that's for you to figure out if you want to. Another thing I'm gonna do here is use Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks, I'm gonna show you one right now. Let's bring one up. This is an example of a Jupyter Notebook. It looks a lot like a web page. You could say I have a lot of text here. Now this is a tutorial that is in one of the links in the description box. And it's a tutorial to get you up and running from ground zero to make a histogram and superimpose a PDF using Python. So a Jupyter Notebook allows you to have code and images. I can put in cool videos and images, but it is they are surrounding pieces of code. So right here, I have um, two plus three. And if I click this play button, it's going to tell me that it's equal to five. Now, I don't want you to get too scared off by how basic this is. Um, the real point of me showing you how to add two plus three is not to teach you Python or R, it's to teach you about Jupyter Notebooks. You will type in these cells and you will hit this play button or you will hold down, uh, hit enter while holding down shift. And all of that is written in this tutorial. So the reason I am using Jupyter Notebooks is because they do allow for all this tutorial stuff around the code. And they're really great for collaboration as well. You may or may not want to use them. 
And this is just another thing that you may or may not want to have to figure out how to do on your local machine. So using Google Collab as opposed to a local machine and using Jupyter Notebooks as opposed to just straight uh, code in it like a text file, these things may be a little more clunky than not, but it's easiest for me to reach the broadest audience possible by using these tools. So let's go to that description box that I've mentioned a couple of times now. Here is the description box below this video. If you want to go straight to the code files, if you already know how to use Python or R, then you would go down here to the bottom and you can click on these links to get my code for making a histogram and superimposing a PDF. And for each Python and R, you have a choice with tutorial or without tutorial. But if you're just getting started here, I have four steps towards the top of the box. Step one is going to be so these steps are in terms of Python, although you can do the same steps with R. So step one here is to download the Python code in a Jupyter Notebook tutorial. And I have a link here for you. If you click on this link, it will open up the code in GitHub. If you know how to use GitHub, great. If not, it is just a place I'm storing your file. Once you get in there, you're gonna wanna go into the upper right here and click on these three dots and click on download to download the code or Jupyter Notebook file. Next thing we wanna do, let's go back to that description box. You wanna make sure you're logged into a Google account. If you don't know what that is, a Gmail account is essentially a Google account. This will allow us to use Google Collab and you'll open that by clicking the link here in step two. What you'll see, depending on whether or not you've used Google Collab before is something like this. If you have used Google Collab before, there'll be more files listed here. But what I want you to do is go down the left to upload, click on this, and then you can browse or drag the file that you just downloaded from GitHub in here. For those of you in the know, you can actually link GitHub directly to Google Collab, but that is again, uh, something I don't wanna go into uh, because again, I wanna keep this tutorial accessible to as many people as possible. So I just want it to be really, really basic. Once you open your file in Google Collab, you will see something like this. It is the Jupyter Notebook, but it is ready to go and execute. And this is the Python tutorial. It will take you to the end. It's not very long, maybe 15 minutes at the most. And you will make a histogram at the end and you will superimpose a PDF. Again, this is a skill we're going to need over and over and over again in this course. So it starts with two plus three. I don't want you to be scared about that. I'm not starting that basic in Python and R, but I am trying to show you how to use a Jupyter Notebook. For example, when you get to these code lines, how to actually run the code. And that's it. I'm going to let the tutorial be the rest of the information from this video. Let me know in the comments below unless look at the date on this video. If it's many years later, I might not be responding to these comments, but let me know in the comments below if you're having any trouble downloading these files or getting anything up and running or any particular trouble with the tutorials. In the next video, we're going to start to talk about random number generators. I will see you in the next one.